So today I'm going to show you how to replace a broken fuel line on a generator. So I found when I went to run this, I usually run about once every two months just to check and make sure everything's running fine. I started up, started up fine, was running, but I was noticing there was some uh, dripping fuel coming out of the line. And when I looked closer, I could actually see that this was broken. That's not a condition you want to run a, a generator and you'll start a fire or it'll cut out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a piece of this off and just take it to an automotive uh, shop and we're just going to get a small piece of hose. So I'm just, so what I did here is I just uh, depressed this little clip to help get it loose. Make sure that this fuel line is closed when you're doing this because you don't want fuel continuing to, to come out of the fuel tank. You just kind of wiggle it back and forth and you can see that I have the hose. So I have the old fuel line here, and I want to demonstrate something. This, you can't really bend it, it just cracks. And one of the things I noticed when I went to the uh, automotive shop is they had some tubing that was very similar to this, and I noticed that it's not rated for fuel. It's actually rated for uh, window washer fluid and vacuum. So that looks almost exactly the same. You notice that there's no reinforcement and things like that. Same with this fuel line. There's no reinforcements. So when it cracks, it just, it's brittle. It just breaks. And then you have a fuel leak. Most fuel lines, on the other hand, so this is actually a fuel line with the same internal diameter and it's marked as a fuel line. Uh, it's a bit thicker. And you'll notice that there's actually fibers in there and there's fiber reinforcements and the, uh, the, the line itself is a bit um, thicker. So I'm going to end up using this thicker fuel line because I just, if, if it breaks, it's not just going to snap off like that. It'll at least have some more reinforcement. So that's what I'm going to use today. So what I need to do is, so I have access to this here, but I need to get access back here. And I bet you could probably do that without taking this off. Um, but my hands are a bit big, so I, I, I'm just going to take this cover off just so it's also easier to see. So th these just snap off here. It's not a bad idea to just inspect your uh, your air intake. So those bolts are eight millimeter. And then this is your intake for your carburetor. So you take these two bolts off, and there's a bolt on the other side of this that you take off and this whole panel comes off. So these are 10 millimeter. And there's one bolt on the other side of here. It's gonna be hard to show you, but I'll show you when I get it off. There's just another one of these hoses. And that's so now you can see where this fuel hose went to, this fuel line. Alright, so now what we have to do is put the new fuel line on, which will go from here to here. Again, I'm using a fuel line instead of what they gave 
uh, originally, which looks like it's non-reinforced, and you can see how brittle it got very, uh, very quickly over a couple of years. I think it was five years. So with this, this is a much better fuel line. Um, you might want to leave a little space in here. Make sure you know that this is all going to vibrate, so make sure it, it, it has some, some room to wiggle. So now that I have the fuel line on there, and I'm going to say that, that I need about that much. So take a good pair of scissors, cut through that fuel line. sure it fits on there nice and snug I'm leaving some some excess here it's gonna vibrate a lot I don't want to be in too tight it might be a little bit too much excess <laughs> Cut a little bit off Test that. Seems pretty good. It's got nice curvature. It's got some wiggle room, so it's not going to vibrate itself off. These little clamps that came with the original fuel line are going to be too small compared to the this new line. We're going to remount all this, so we got our fuel line attached to the bottom, attached to the top, got a little bit of excess so it can and wobble a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do now is reattach all these bolts and hoses and all this random stuff. Alright, so I'm going to start with the bottom because that's going to probably be the hardest to get to. This is that 10 millimeter bolt. So we got this one on the bottom seat at the right place and two bolts to the carburetor in the right place. So I'm going to put this one on the bottom back. Now we put the cover back on, make sure that this tube is in here, so we put the cover on. Now we can place, these are those 8 millimeter nuts. Now we put this filter in, and then there's this gross large uh, filter I'm trying to get all the hair and stuff before it gets to that smaller filter and then we have a cover I'm just gonna snap that in place it should be good now the moment of truth so I'm gonna move this over a little bit move it over what we're going to do is uh, open the fuel line, give that a second for the fuel to come down to the carburetor. We're just going to check and make sure there's no leaks underneath anything. So now I'm going to start it up. Generally, uh, I had to replace the carburetor, but the old carburetor that comes originally with it had this little thing here that if you wanted it to start you would have to be on this side and you would move the, the lever over to the right to run uh, I have a different carburetor so it's not exactly the same so I'm gonna hit the start button and I have the electric start otherwise 
you'd be pulling the pull string, which I just don't feel like. So here we go. So the reason I cut the fuel off is I just want to make sure the carburetor doesn't have fuel sitting in there. The carburetors generally get gunked up uh, if you let gas sit there for too long, and that's where you're going to have most of your problems with starting it. So instead, I'm just going to start try to get the rest of the fuel out. <laughs> pretty much that, and pretty much that ensures that there's no more gas in the system, so uh, you won't have an issue with your your carburetor. So it was good, uh, good quick fix uh, to replace a fuel line. If you have any other ideas, just leave them in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. It helps me out and makes me just want to do uh, more repairs and, and put more videos out there. So thanks again. Have a great day.